From the middle is a founding member of Odd Pods Media. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode 160 of From the Middle. We are three middle-class guys living in the middle of America in the middle chapters of our lives with a point of view that's somewhere in the middle. And if that doesn't tell you enough, we're a comedy, culture, entertainment, and interview-style podcast, and you're going to crack up listening to our show because we're friggin' hilarious. Seriously, though, in this episode, we talk about our issues going through the drive through Corey and I lost our grandmother, so we give her a nice shout-out on this episode and the time we spent with family. Kendall goes fishing, uh, finds a bird, and we talk a whole lot about sports and some of what we're streaming on the back end. Here we go. <coughs> oh, for the love. <laughs> Sorry, just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? So cerebral, and you're so developed and evolved. <laughs> From the middle after dark over here. Is that a JC Penny shirt? I uh, probably. It's uh, nice. Uh, the wife bought it for me a couple of years ago, maybe. I like it. Thank you. For some reason, this is one of my least favorite shirts. And uh, <laughs> however, however, it's like the only one I get compliments on. Mm. What don't you like about it? I don't know. Too bright? Maybe. I just, think that's it. <laughs> just too just. bright. Well, I recently bought like a bright yellow shirt for myself. Mm. That's like it was on an Amazon special. It was like a Columbia fishing shirt, which I, I love their their fishing shirts. And um with the little air holes in the flap, the, it's, the it's back a, flap, the vented, vented back, vented back, and, yeah. the, and the the pockets and the little rod holder Velcro strap right yep. here. Yep. Uh, there, you don't. I mean, I think it's impossible to sweat inside of those shirts. Yeah. They're that comfy in the summertime, and uh, and you know when you're my size, you get really excited to find a sale. And I found a sale on that one in particular, and that color is like all of them were like sixty dollars, sixty dollars, sixty dollars, sixty dollars. Here's the color no one wants: twenty bucks. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take it. Yes, and I like it. It's I, one of my favorite shirts. I think they're still pretending to market that to outdoorsmen, knowing very well it's fat men like me who prefer that shirt far and away the most. <laughs> they're just pretending on commercials and in ads that yeah. it's still for the outdoorsmen. You know, I've said this before about. Um, columbia to my wife that there's there's a couple brands out there if i ever am successful enough with a diet plan that i get down to like a respectable weight for a guy my height um there are a couple of brands that i'm going to stay loyal to because in my fat days they were there for me when no Mm -hmm. one else was (laughs) and columbia is one of those companies Mm -hmm. there they are a company that makes good stuff they don't skimp on Mm -hmm. the big and tall stuff and they're big and tall stuff. Not only is it just like the same shirt, but bigger, but it's like actual, like they cut it differently because mm-hmm. there's an understanding there, right? So many other places you buy pants or whatever else. And they're like, oh, you have a large waist. You must be nine feet tall. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, no, no, we're just fat. <laughs> our, our arms and legs are of normal length. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're preaching so, to the choir, man. Yeah. So yeah. Columbia has been one of those companies for me. Um, Polo has been another one of those companies for me. And so many others have failed Nike. I, I'll give props to Eddie Bauer there for the go. same thing. They yeah. do a very good job at making things for people that are bigger but still hold up. And I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, Eddie Bauer. Polo Ralph Lauren. Yes. Or Lauren. Ralph yes. Lauren. Ralph Lauren. That guy. <clears throat> that guy. Um, Is Dylan. It, isn't that who made out with Phoebe on the elevator? <laughs> Rachel? Rachel. Uh, maybe. I think it was Rachel. I think it was Phoebe. Anyways. Um, Dylan, weren't you just saying you were tired of being marketed to? <laughs> yeah. I don't. It's a thing. I, Every time you go to a drive through window? Every, every drive through. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. Would you like to try a caramel apple empanada? It's a crispy golden pastry pocket filled with chunks of warm apples and a creamy caramel sauce. No, I just want a soda. <laughs> I don't I want a caramel apple. They don't have those anymore anyways. I, I actually, I was thinking about caramel apple empanadas because it's summer. Mm. And sometimes Taco Bell was good for a few good sweet treats. And everyone always jumps straight to the Choco Taco. It's good. Don't get me wrong. 
But if you remember, the caramel apple empanadas were delicious, not empandas, <laughs> as some people so unlikely right, yeah. called them. Idiots. But do you remember the strawberry like cheesecake desserts that they had in the little cooler with the Choco Taco? No. Not all locations had them, but they were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real treat. So, so uh, before we hit the record button, Dylan, when we were just sound checking, mm-hmm. made a quick little quip. Mm-hmm. Of what? What did you say about which thing? I make chick- lots of funny. Chick- I say lots you, of funny. You do stuff. say lots of funny things. Would you like a chick chicken quesadilla? No, I would like. A oh, yeah. yeah. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. Would you like a chicken quesadilla? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, I'll take a chicken quesadilla. <laughs> That's the other side of being marketed to. Guess what? Nobody's listening. They don't care anymore, and exactly. we're tired of it. Exactly, and, and that's uh, yeah. It, I have that exact same experience all the time. Where uh, I'll drive through McDonald's or wherever, and they'll have like a a recording. Yes, mm-hmm. and it has now become a thing where it's like the recording prompts you to like start ordering. Hi, mm-hmm. welcome to McDonald's. Try our blah 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 today. How can I help you? And then you start talking, and then. 30 seconds later, someone goes, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you start over, please? <laughs> so now I have like don't know what to do. So I I just sit. I listen to the thing. I ignore the fact that they told me to go ahead with my order. And I just sit and wait for until the, somebody. For real, the real person, yeah. For the real person to talk to me. It confuses the bejeebers out of me what to do in that situation. And I hate it. Yeah. Um, I think it's confusing them. Clearly, they don't even know how their pre-recorded message is ending right. and how normal conversation flows. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of McDonald's and being confused, this felt like a layup to me. Let me ask you two. My wife and I go through McDonald's because we want. she wants an Icy. I want a soda. Yeah. And I say, I would like, I didn't say diet whatever this time because I knew they had Coke. So I was trying to order more specifically. Yes. And I said, I'd like a large Coke Zero. Thinking pretty much everyone calls their diet Zero now. Mm-hmm. And they said, I'm sorry, we don't have Coke Zero. The end. Okay. I say, what other diets do you have? And they say, we have Diet Coke. Would that be okay? I had to prompt them with other options when it felt like the layup response was, we don't have Coke Zero. Would Diet Coke be okay? Right. Felt like a really easy and then immediately I felt punished because I didn't just use my diet whatever. If I had said <laughs> diet whatever, it would have worked. That's what you get, Dylan. I tried to stray, and I tried to be normal. Also, a little bit of malicious compliance going on at McDonald's. I feel like they're frustrated when you want to add mayonnaise to something that doesn't have mayonnaise. I, none of this is true, but in my head it is. When I want to add mayonnaise to a sandwich, I said light today when i got it light mayonnaise Mm -hmm. i feel like they take the mayonnaise and that there's a large bin plastic bin with a lid full of mayonnaise and they take the sandwich and they throw it in the mayonnaise bin (laughs) and then somebody grabs the handles and shakes it around really good (laughs) and then slaps the mayonnaise bun covered sandwich into the wrapper and puts it in your bag knowing full well yeah you're going to have a handful of greasy mayonnaise when yeah. you try to eat that sandwich. You want mayonnaise? We'll give you mayonnaise. We oh. can show you some mayonnaise. You want to add mayonnaise to an item? You're going to get all the mayonnaise yeah. you can handle. Listen, the chef says that this sandwich does not need mayonnaise. <laughs> so we're, we're going to teach you a lesson here. You're going to smoke a whole pack of mayonnaise. <laughs> you know the only reason I know that there's no sh- <laughs> You know the only reason I know there's no chef at McDonald's? Because they're not paying anybody a chef level title at McDonald's. <laughs> uh. There, if there was a chef at McDonald's, I want to see a guy come out in a white coat at an individual McDonald's restaurant. Not the head chef that cooks at corporate. An individual <laughs> chef that walks out of the back and says, uh, yes, I'm the chef. Yeah. And he makes like... Walks, walks around the tables. Like, yeah. Is everything okay? Is everything... Is everything how right? about the pickle to mayonnaise ratio? Is it good on that one? <laughs> a little bit of malicious compliance. Do you also fix shake machines? Is that something you can do? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but they can get you a delightful cherry or apple turnover. Mm. Two for a dollar. Yeah. No, thanks. Just the fries. Just the fries. Was Just that the, the end of your frustration with... with uh, Drive through. Yeah, that was that was it. Marketing and, and just that. It, and to Dylan's point, it's useless because I don't listen to it. And sometimes I do order, and I think to myself, I wonder if that's what they were trying to sell me. 
Yeah. But I wasn't listening. Yeah. Uh, the person on the other end, when you don't listen, is very frustrated. I'll let you know. Yeah. Well, but conversely, I'm frustrated at being trying to be sold everything. So Exactly. You know, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. What are we going to do? Well, it's episode 160. Um, we took our first ever uh, week off last week due to an unexpected loss. Uh, Dylan and I's grandmother uh, of 83 years uh, passed away, and um, it was sad. Uh, we're not going to dwell on it, but I just wanted to share. There was a couple really uh, beautiful moments um, last week. Um, just stuff that stood out to me. And then Dylan, I don't know if you want to say a word or two, but so grandma passed on a Sunday and, uh, immediately Sherry and I, uh, drove up to be with family and it was r- just the most beautiful picture that, uh, Sherry and I stayed with our grandpa and every single night from the, from the day that she passed until the funeral this past Friday, there was extended family there every night until 10, 11 p.m. We had my mom and her siblings and all their spouses and then all the cousins. I'm the oldest and Dylan is the second oldest grandchild uh, for grandma and grandpa. So all of our younger cousins were there up to like 25 people every single night, just like eating food and crying and telling stories and laughing. And grandma and grandpa have a beautiful pond that sits at the top of this dam. So we were fishing, doing some (coughs) pond fishing and and swimming and floating on the rafts and just hanging out together as a family. And I think, you know, we've been really lucky in that uh, at 37 years old, for me, I've never really lost a close family member. Um, Sure, we've lost great grandparents. And we had a a grandmother, my dad's mom, who lived in Urbana that we only saw twice a year. So not close. Um, But Grandma Connor, who passed... um, a week and a half ago, she like basically helped raise us. So this was like our first real close to home loss. And I think just being together with um, grandpa, my aunts and uncles, my cousins just really made that sort of shock because it was unexpected. She wasn't in peak physical health, but it made the sort of the unexpectedness of it a little easier. And so that was really cool. And then the second thing I wanted to share. So, um, we, I think we've shared before that we come from a very musical family, and my grandma Connor was in a national group called Sweet Adelines that has regional chapters. It's female barbershop, and they can have tons of women in the group. It's not just for like traditional barbershop. It could be you know a, a lot. And um, so music was very important to her. Her love of music is something that she passed on. And so my mom, uh, who has been a recording artist, gets the idea, hey, why don't, at the funeral, since Grandma loved it more than anything, when we all just sang together as a family, why don't we just sing to her? Not a performance. We don't get up in front of the church and face the congregation. We just stay in our pews, and the 25 or 30 of us will just sing to her, sing to the, to the casket at the front of the church. And just to avoid any confusion, we'll put this little note in the bulletin that says, like, family tribute to Carol or something like that. So we did. And we sang three-part harmony, a couple hymns, and um, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if on the tag of the last song, we just have the, the youngest kids in the family sing it as, like, a symbol of her passing her love of music, and yeah. um, because it's a hymn, her love of Jesus throughout the generations. And so we did that. And then... I think it was the coolest thing, point of the story. So there's only like two or three funeral homes um, in the small town that that we're from and the towns near where we're from, and Bailiff and Sons is is one of them. They did a terrific job with her service. But old man Bailiff, the guy who started uh, the funeral home business, comes up to my mom afterwards and says, Miss Kelly, I just have to tell you, I've been doing this my entire career, and I've never, ever seen four generations of a family sing to their departed loved one. That's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And I just, it was a great service. And I just wanted to say like for anyone out there, like always be telling your loved ones how much you love them. But when you do, it's just something I just learned at age 37. You know, if you do experience loss, I just encourage you. And a lot of people said it, get with family, tell stories, remember the good times and laugh and be together 
and just huge, massive shout out. Because it's a small town, so many people brought food and flowers and just loved on our whole family for that whole week. So um, just some positive things from that experience because we're very authentic. Uh, I thought it was worth sharing. Dylan, is there anything you'd want to add from from the last week and a half or so? Oh, well, and, and we ended up at two funerals in a week with some extended family as well. I, yeah, I think you summed it up nicely. I don't want to cheapen it, um, you know, just by throwing out random thoughts, but, um, but it, it was a very lovely service. Um, she was one of my favorite people, uh, of all time. So I'll certainly miss her. And there was lots of, of funny stories told too, (laughs) that, that, uh, were great reminders of part of the reason why we all loved her so much. She could certainly be quiet, but uh, she was very funny as well, and so um, I, I, nothing, nothing else to add. It was it was great to get to spend so much time with family, especially after the last couple of years of the pandemic and not yeah. seeing people as much or at at all. To then go um, uh, spend almost a whole week with family in a couple of days, I worked from you know our parent one of our parents' houses and um, you know kind of in the middle of that. That was it was great and. I know my daughter, who's four and a half, got to ride a four wheeler. She'd never done that before. Got to ride in a paddle boat. Got to ride nice. in, in a Kubota, um, and we were able to pawn her off on some of our uh, our cousins, and uh, and and so she could go play with them. So she had a ton of fun in spite of the circumstances, and it gave us time to sort of relax and and um, commune with family. So um, yeah, it, it was it was. Uh, uh, it was a very nice time, all things considered, um, you know, in, in spite of the loss. So, And just um, thanks, Kendall, because I know you posted that week and, and let everybody know what was up. And I just have to thank a whole bunch of you sent private messages mm-hmm. um, and comments uh, on social media. Uh, I got a lot of texts from, from a lot of you, and, and uh, I know Dylan did too, close friends of the show. So just thanks a ton. It's just really cool when your tribe sort of rallies around you in a, in a tough time. And so anyway, um, thanks for the memories, Queenie. We love you. And, uh, now let's talk about other stuff. The artist formerly known as Queenie. Yep. And that was, that was her name. There's a whole story about Queen Shaniqua was a guest on weekend update on SNL. And I think the story goes that Queen Shaniqua on weekend update wore this very like traditional African tribal garb. Okay. And grandma was given a muumu or a gift once that looked similar to the pattern oh, yeah? of Queen Shaniqua's garb. And so my uncle Kevin, I think I'm remembering it right, started calling her Queen Shaniqua, and then it was just Queenie. And so we grew up, and Grandma Connor was Queenie. And so anyway, so we had a lot of, uh, uh, we sent a lot of Queen, uh, the crown emojis to one another during the week. And then I think some of our cousins are getting Queen or crown tattoos. Really? In honor of oh, Grandma. Cool. So anyway, so anyway, thanks, man. Appreciate your 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 uh, support as well. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> pond fishing. Now what do we do? Speaking of pond fishing, <laughs> <laughs> it, we are in peak summer, and I, I think you had a story about pond fishing. Well, so <laughs> this is a, by now it's an old story, <laughs> but. Uh, my daughter was invited to a uh, friend's birthday party, and these are friends of the church. <clears throat> um, and uh, and the, the husband of which I, I don't know very well. And it was an opportunity for me to kind of maybe get to know him. And so I took her to this uh, birthday party, and the idea was I was going to hang out with her, uh, whatever, the husband, the dad. And they have a pond. They li- they're living my dream where they are. Yeah. They're, they're living in the middle of nowhere. They've got a pond where they can fish. Um, sounds like your your grandpa's house. Yeah. Uh, but so so I go there to fish, and uh, and so we're hanging out. Me and my boys, and he and his boy kind of pops in and out. <coughs> Went fishing, and he he pulls out a a little aluminum John boat with a trolling motor on the back. And I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. And he's getting it set up and everything. And, and, uh, and he's like, all right, it's ready to go. And then, so my boys get in and then, um, and he's like, I was just going to let you take them. I'm like, Whoa, 
I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like, I've never driven a boat before. Oh, okay. I understand it's a, just a John boat with a trolling motor. I've been out on a rowboat before, and I've been out on someone else's like speedboat that we fished from for like a couple of hours in my life. That's the extent of my boating experience. Um, <clears throat> for those who fish, like boats are super convenient because you can obviously fish in spots that fishing from the bank can't get you. Right. And um, you get different angles and things just far more convenient. Uh, but uh, so I was excited to try going out on this boat and I got in. I'm trolling around and everything and it's fine. It's easy to do. Um, and then we uh, we get back to the dock and I help the boys out. And then I stand up to try to get out. I've never gotten out of a boat like this before. And so I'm thinking to myself, like, it didn't cross my mind that when I push off of my feet, it's going to push the boat that way. Back into the water. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm like literally creating a bridge. My upper body is hanging onto the bottom of the deck. <laughs> my feet are in the boat, which is getting further away. And I ended up falling in oh, to their uh, little backwoods <laughs> pond. And, uh, and and this was like only like maybe a third of the way through the time that we were going to be there. Like this was early on. <laughs> and so like I'm wearing jeans and my shirt. I took my shoes and socks off and let them dry out. And I'm just like, I just fished from the dock the rest of the time. Um, and let my clothes dry out. And they pretty much were dry by the time we were done, but not quite. It was, it was a very embarrassing experience, a very smelly experience. <laughs> My wallet, I'm pretty sure, still smells like pond fish. Mm. Um, Ooh, yeah, I didn't think about your wallet and phone. Yeah, yeah, my, my phone was in my pocket and everything. Uh, it was fine, by the way. The phone, and Apple Watch, everything was okay. Everything survived. But, um, man, it was, it, it was not fun. I wish somebody would have had it on video. I was just going to say, right before you said it was embarrassing, I was like, was nobody there to get this on camera? Yeah, it was not on any, any cameras that I'm aware of. But... Yeah. I don't. I don't. Did we talk about the the pond almost sinking the pontoon boat a few years back? Have we ever talked about I that? Don't I don't think, think so. so. That's right. Before iPhones were water resistant or waterproof yeah. like they are now, there was a handful of us on our Grandpa Hubble's pontoon boat. A few too many adults in the front end started sinking, started going under. So we're all immediately our phones are up over our head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the most valuable thing on us at that point right. because we've just got our clothes on and probably our wallets. And so I don't know. I don't remember how far under it dips, uh, but it was. A yeah. Good, it was if, a good if you way don't back. know, pontoon boats are a flat bottom boat with two long, hollow pontoons or, you know, aluminum. Yeah. Cylinders on the side for floating. And they usually have like nice carpet on. I mean, it was the water was coming up the carpet. So yeah. the pontoons were well below the water and nobody was prepared to swim. This was just supposed to be a like, we're all just going to go take a ride out on the lake. Yeah. <laughs> and so we re redistributed the weight. And <laughs> yeah. And went right back. Fortunately before, but I, all of us <laughs> instantly grabbing the phone, okay, to, you know, hold the phone up above the water. Uh, yeah. That was a way different time. Now you can, <laughs> you can fall in. And as long as your phone doesn't sink, you just set it on the thing. And it dries out. So how was the fishing that day? Was it? Was oh, it, it was good? it was fine. I mean, we, we, a few fish were caught, a couple of bass, and yeah. a crappy, crappy, yeah. which they they he didn't even realize were in his pond. Oh so wow, that was that was nice. fun. Um, he had tried to stalk them before and yeah. assumed that they had all died. Yeah, and it was actually his son who got one. Pond fishing is fun for me because especially. You find these farmers who have ponds on their property somewhere, and they're like, oh, ain't nobody fished in that for about 15 years. So you're just like, this is a total crapshoot of what's yeah. in here, which is really fun and exciting. Maybe they're sturgeon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we discovered that I'm, I don't think my grandpa's pond has been fished in a while, but when we were there, you know, with family sort of mourning and everything, somebody would take a pole out and just throw it in the water, not really caring if you caught anything, but just yeah. passing the time or whatever. <clears throat> And Grandpa has these like hybrid. Uh, they I guess they call them shell crackers. He said, which is like a hybrid between like southern red ears and traditional bluegill, and they're super aggressive and bigger than this, you know, <laughs> headphone case. Yeah, and I'm like it would take like two or three, and you could have a nice fish fry. So yeah. I think when we go back, I've got this. Uh, I've got I've got a connection for some really good Amish made 
breading for frying fish. There you go. And I'm like, I think it'd be great to take the cast iron skillet, Dude, get a little man, fire. Catch and, and eat, bro. Yeah, catch and eat. We normally catch and release, but and then there's some nice largemouth bass in there that are just always fun to hit when the mm-hmm. sun's going down. Yeah. So it was fun. Speaking of uh beautiful property and living the dream, Dylan. I'm forcing you to talk about some exciting news. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, almost so close. In about a week, we will, uh, my wife and I and daughter will close on our new home. First yeah. home. First home. Yeah, first home. Uh, first home slash new home. Very exciting. I'm the sort of cautiously optimistic until the keys are in my hand. <laughs> it doesn't, right. you know, this it doesn't gonna feel this. Out. Something's going to fall through. <laughs> a tornado is going to sweep through and knock it down like two days before we get it or something. That's uh, the spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, somebody has to be the pessimist, I guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, really no one. I just... I don't know what that is that it just it doesn't feel real. We've only been on walkthroughs with yeah. the people's stuff still in it. Um, you know, we haven't done the final walkthrough yet. Yeah. We haven't got so it's like their stuff is still there. I think it'll really settle in once we start moving our stuff in. And so we're we're getting all of that prepared now. It's like, okay, we're gonna have a locksmith, we're gonna have people come in and clean vents and deep clean, and we're gonna have, you know, the movers and we're gonna gotta set up utilities and so all of that is becoming very real and it's very exciting. Yeah. Um in fact what's today? I'm trying to think. Maybe not next week, but in two episodes. So by one sixty two Maybe 163 at the latest, I might be recording from the new office in the new house. So not too not too far out. I've lost track of the time already. But um, so it's very exciting. Yes. Um, I'm excited for you guys. Uh, the pictures are stunning. You have a, a few highlights of the home are a beautiful mm. finished basement, your office. And I'm taking dad words, dad's words out of his mouth. He's like, but above all else, my favorite is that screened in back porch it's like the most (laughs) cool uh looking perfect for entertaining and perfect for people who aren't necessarily in the sun all the time i think is a nice way to say Mm, yeah Um, yeah it's it's, yeah Uh, well super super nice yeah those were a few of the things that stood out to me i think when we when we walked the house the first time we got to the basement with the realtor, um, I think I sort of choked out. <laughs> I think I'm in love uh, <laughs> as we as we were walking. Uh, another highlight: there's more toilets than there are human beings uh, that, in the house. So um, at least good. at least regular human beings that will sleep there. So uh, that's a big highlight. As we have one <laughs> bathroom in our house now, and you can only use your imagination to think up of ways that that's been an issue. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I've considered the bucket in the basement many times. <laughs> so, but it, I'll put it I that. just want my piece. Yeah. Can I, am I allowed to you, <laughs> Googling, can, can you pee into a sump pump? <laughs> oh, <laughs> far worse than peeing, my friend. <laughs> far worse. <laughs> wow, uh, it didn't take us long to go from the loss of grandma to talking about poop. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so the basement, um, very excited. I, I That's the... I've already said, like, if it's hot outside, we'll be in the basement. And if it's nice outside, we'll be out on the patio. Um, that'll be a really easy way to sort of split the house. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a really nice finished screened in um, porch. It's got that, like, Trex boarding. It's the really nice, like, durable. Yeah. I just got to get a, a grill. Uh, the the trend right now, at least in, in our area, is, like, the Blackstone grills. Mm-hmm. And so, um, blackstone grills and smokers. Yeah, so I got to get a nice blackstone grill. Probably maybe not this year. Probably next year that I can put out there um, for uh, for grilling. But yeah, just a really nice shaded, cool spot behind the house, and um, we're excited. Yeah, that's exciting, dude. Exciting. Yeah, it'll get real. It'll yeah, get real toilets too. If I didn't <laughs> say that, very excited for extra <laughs> toilets. <laughs> Well, speaking of things having new homes, there's something else that got a new home, and we'll talk about it right after a word from some of our friends in the Odd Pods Media Network. Hey, it's Dalton. And Sam. We want to tell you about our podcast called Big Ten Plus Four. Are you a college football fan who doesn't want to always be talking about the SEC? Are you a college basketball fan who's tired of hearing how the Big Ten doesn't win in the big dance? Then we're the show for you. Check us out each week on the Odd Pods Media Network. We bring you college sports with a Big Ten flavor. Big Ten Plus Four. College sports with Midwest perspective. Blue collar and blue blood. 
Hi, I'm Tina Jaramillo. And I'm Hillary Doherty. And we host the Muck Podcast, where we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. Hey, Tina, did you know that Elvis crashed the Nixon White House for the sole purpose of getting a DEA badge and it worked? What? (laughs) Or how a gun control advocate senator out of California engaged in gun trafficking with notorious gang leader Shrimp Boy? (laughs) Shrimp Boy, I remember him. Okay, so, you know, we cover all of that and more from Malady madness, mischief, and murder in U.S. politics. And we also host a bi-weekly interview segment called Lil Muck. We interview politicians, journalists, activists, and others who share their experiences in politics. Find The Muck Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and check us out on social media at The Muck Podcast. So there's something that has a new home. Kendall, do you want to tell us about it? Well, not a forever home necessarily yet, but we are fostering another a temporary bird. home. Yeah. Oh, oh, is this one biting you? This one does not bite. Yeah. The same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this bird is a lot friendlier. It, it seems to be my estimation is it's less healthy. Um, it's a weaker bite. <laughs> it's a weaker bite. <laughs> It's a, this is also like I've handled a good handful of birds in my day and this one is just like it's it's just it's not steady on its feet when you hold it like it feels like it's going to fall off and it can't mm. climb around quite as agilely as other birds that uh, that I've experienced that with so I'm not sure I'm not sure where this bird's health stands but mm. other than that she's she's uh, uh, a relatively kind bird and that she doesn't hurt you when she's, you know, snapping at you with her beak when you're trying to, like, move her from one place to another. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Um, is it another species of parrot? I think I saw a picture. Is, it's a red one. It's a red one. This is the same species that Toby was. Yeah. Um, which, was, which is an eclectus. Uh, eclectuses are the only species of birds where you can tell just by looking at coloration, by looking at the bird, whether it's male or female. Okay. So the males are green. Like Toby, females are red. Got it. Um, <clears throat> everything else, you need to get a vet with a microscope to tell you. Mm-hmm. Or what you a- wait until it lays eggs, and <laughs> if it lays eggs, and then you, then you know. What does the vet do? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd imagine tweezers and a magnifying glass or something. Mm. I'm not sure. So kind of like my doctor. <laughs> this episode brought to you by Manscaped. <laughs> Oh, for the love. <laughs> oh, jeez. Man. So like a normal checkup. That's oh. what I mean. It's like a normal checkup. <laughs> um, I don't mind self-defecating humor. Yeah, you I know, know you that. don't. We yeah. talk about it here. Yeah, exactly. All the time. Uh. Um, yeah. So her name is Baby. We, we would change that. If, uh, the problem is she knows her name and she says her name. So I was thinking changing it to BB. And maybe that will be good enough. Uh, so we don't know if we're keeping her yet or not. And time will tell. <clears throat> the The bird rescue place is like over overcome now with uh, so many mm-hmm. birds at the moment that uh, we're basically helping them by taking a bird out of yeah. there for now. Well, if you keep BB, uh, you can maybe find a CC and they can do what together. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Anyway, come on, <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that bad. I don't know what I got to do for a sound effect around here. Come <laughs> on. That's, uh, oh, come on. It's a, uh, Can I just say, yeah. Dylan has one of my favorite wits in podcast. Oh, he's great, isn't he? He's very funny. So sharp. I, didn't, I, I never I, remember those buttons. I didn't think it was going to be the deep cut Christian music industry joke <laughs> that would get me the sound effect, but finally. There it is. Wasn't BB, BB the male? Yeah, and was, CC was the. They female? were siblings. Yeah, BB and CC Winans. If you're looking for that, right did now. he sing on the Beauty and the Beast soundtrack? I I don't think that was. Let me look that up. Maybe no, he didn't. Anyway, uh, so anyways. there's now there's another bird story that happened just two days ago, three days ago. It involves. I talked to police today. Whoa. Um. So we have a. If you have like the Ring video doorbell camera or whatever, you know that there's like the Ring community um, that you can be a part of right. with your neighborhood and and whatnot, which we are. And someone had posted in there that uh, that they have a parrot in a tree in their backyard. And so, if anyone's looking for their parrot, um, they have it. 
and it was a little ways away from us. But a- Amy had had contacted them, just say like, "Hey, you know, we're bird people. We have a travel cage. Like, if you want, like, we can come and." get this bird and like we'll know how to feed it and that kind of thing until until this gets resolved and so she said okay and so my wife went down there this is late in the in the evening gets this bird and uh and brings it home and takes a couple pictures and posts it on pet fbi and all of the social things trying to find the owner for this bird and uh but not not hearing anything back, and <clears throat> so eventually she contacts the bird rescue that we're fostering baby from right now, and they said, "You know what? We ha- we have an open cage if you want to bring her here." <clears throat> so we decided, yeah, that's probably a good idea. They have more resources than we do when it comes to trying to figure out where a bird belongs, and so she took the bird there, and on her way there, she got a phone call from somebody um, who had said that they had lost a bird. And but like didn't seem to be excited that Amy had the bird and told Amy that like they live just around the corner from us. So it must be there since I wait a minute. We didn't find the bird here. I found the bird. All told, like there were a couple of people who contacted her to say this is their bird. And apparently this is a a real problem in the exotic bird world. Like there are people who go on to Pet FBI and just claim birds and resell them. Oh. This is a thing, uh, or they just try to get their hands on <clears throat> on on a parrot any way they can to try so, to resell the thing. So like bird trafficking, bird trafficking, yeah. Is that worse? Oh wait, I mean, bird trafficking gets deeper than that. Bird trafficking gets to like illegal uh, capture of birds um, overseas and then smuggling them here to sell them. Like, I could also see like somebody who a uh, private, like the J- Jurassic Park story, but somebody's trying to buy like. A, a bald eagle, an American bald eagle, or something mm-hmm. that you like can't own here. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. But no, it's 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 a legitimate it's a legitimate bad oh my gosh. bad thing. I mean, it, what's so wrong with people? The opposite thing with dogs. Where with dogs, they tell you like don't buy from breeders, whatever. You know, right. Adopt. Um, birds, exact opposite. Don't uh, don't adopt birds because you don't know where they came from, and there's a very good chance it came from from something illegal. Uh, instead, buy from breeders. I think you were going to say, like, don't take birds from trees. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was <laughs> like. Wait a minute. A There's a bird in a tree. How did she get the bird in the cage? It's a tame bird. Like, it, eventually, like, a, a teenage boy in the area, like, climbed the tree and shook it. And the bird kind of, like, flew down to the ground. And then Amy was able to just, like, pick it up. And wow. the bird was fine. Huh. Like, had obviously been handled a lot and was perfectly comfortable being with Amy. Wow. And uh, when she got at home, we were trying to get this bird up onto onto one of our perches that has a water dish and, and a food dish there. And it drank, like, a couple laps of water, but then, like, flew to Amy's shoulder, didn't want to be anywhere else. Wow. we You can make a Coria logo, like Buckeye Bird Rescue. <laughs> For yeah, that'd be a cool. Yeah, when cool something up. hits the the community page again, you guys can like strap up and be like bird rescue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, so one of these one of these people that like we're pretty sure they're full of it, who's been trying to get a hold of this bird. Yeah, can you report them con- somehow? Well, so they contacted the uh, the bird rescue place, and the bird rescue place was like, "Yeah, you guys are shady, and nothing you're telling me makes sense." So. Unless you can prove to me somehow that this is your bird, the answer is no. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the the bird is banded, by the way. It has a little metal ring around its around its leg uh, with information on it, unique information on it. And like these people don't know what that information is, and sketch. whatever it is, but it's you, all very. You have sketchy. their information, so like you could report that to the bird. But apparently, authorities. those so those people contacted the police in the town where I lived. I got a phone call today from a sergeant and he was like, okay, can you guys tell me about this bird or whatever? So I told him the whole story and about how the bird is at the Charlie Brown bird rescue. He's like, he, he's like, yeah, apparently like the Charlie Brown bird rescue people, they're not, they're not willing to give up this bird. And so then I just kind of tell him what I know. And then, and then he told me, yeah, it sounds like they're full of crap. Yeah. I thought he was going to be like those Hendersons. I know them. So, they're always up to something. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he said, he's like, I'm going to dig into this a little bit more. But if like, if what you're telling me is all accurate. Like, he I stumbles don't... upon like a whole bird <laughs> trafficking ring. Well, he's, he said, I have no problem filing charges against them for filing a, 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 a false report. Wow. Yeah, but, because within the community, if you know to say, look, there's a unique ID tag on the bird's leg, and these people knew nothing about that information, if they were the owners, there's no way they wouldn't know that information, then yeah. that seems pretty clear cut. Well, that and this like this super tame bird that that they think, if they say that they live on a street just around the corner from us, and then try to claim that it's their bird... Or no, they don't live there. Their friends live there. They were just visiting. Sure, sure. that's the story. Oh, yeah. uh, well, there are bird leashes, so and I guess so that checks out. But they didn't know when they told my wife that that the my wife didn't find the bird in our yard. Found the bird across town. Mm. This this tame pet bird didn't travel that far. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so that's. That's that saga. Wow, the adventures of Kendall and the bird fostering and bird rescue. Yeah. Fun times. And just a quick fact check. I was confusing B.B. Winans, or is it Wyans, with oh, Peebo Bryson. It oh, was yeah, Peebo Bryson who sang oh, okay. Beauty and the Beast with Celine Dion on track 15 yeah, of the Peebo. Beauty and the Beast soundtrack. Yep. Peebo, not B.B. <laughs> not B.B. <laughs> Winans. <laughs> anyway, there's some exciting things going on in the world of sports. Oh, boy. Things are about to get real different. Oh, man, this is going to be. I've been so excited to talk this, about sports with you guys. I bet. This is going to be a <laughs> weekly. This, is, this might be a weekly topic or a, a monthly topic for a little while. The, uh, the quick version uh, for all of our college football and college sports friends um, is that uh, USC and University of the University Trojans of Southern California and UCLA USC. the Bruins the Bruins yep have been in, have been invited or got themselves invited depending on which source you're reading uh, have gotten themselves invited to join the Big 10 conference they're in and i saw uh, yeah they're in for 2024 i think uh, and and i did see today interestingly uh, so a lot of folks immediately thought the Big 10 you know pillaged uh, started pillaging the Pac-12, and that mm-hmm. there's rumors that you know maybe some of the Notre Dame or some of the ACC schools could fall into the Big Ten, Big Ten as well. Maybe some more Pac-12 schools, but I've seen a few more reports that it's potentially that UCLA was so much in the red on athletics that they were looking to like seriously have to cut sports, mm-hmm. and that the Big Ten media money, the the money made from TV revenue. Uh, and those TV deals are so huge that it was a way to kind of bail out UCLA. Yeah. And so there are rumors that USC and UCLA as a package deal um, might have gone to the Big Ten and said, hey, if you're interested, um, yeah. that they might have been shopping themselves anyways to whoever was interested, which why not from a Big Ten standpoint, if you don't care about the travel regionality of the sport, which no one does anymore it doesn't matter these from, days. from the conferences, they don't care. Um, from the conference level, I won't say that some of the athletic directors and presidents of the universities might, but for the most part, the the powers that be that actually make the money are are deciding. Um, and so now you've got these two teams that have played in the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl has this traditional tie to the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Um, there might be more Pac-12 teams that that fall into the Big Ten by the time this is all said and done. And this feels as big. Um, or, or nearly as big as Texas and Oklahoma going to the oh, SEC. Oh, yeah, for sure. This is not that necessarily UCLA and USC are as good as Oklahoma and Texas, um, you know, at the USC moment. USC is ready to go, man. But USC is all stocked up uh, yep. and ready to go. UCLA is not bad. Um, they're they're average most most years. Uh, they're kind of like Michigan State. Like they they have some really good years. In any given year, they could have nine or ten wins, or they could be six and six by the end. Were they dominating so, in the Pete Carroll years? Is that when that was USC? Well, USC, yeah. USC. Oh, yeah. man, I we love to hate them then. And what's also fun is UCLA. For anybody that cares, is also a great addition to the for the basketball side, yeah. which that doesn't hurt the Big Ten basketball uh, at all. Um, and so now there's all these other wild rumors of how all these other teams could shake out. Yeah. Is there going to be more movement? But very, very interesting, whether you like the move or not, 
Um, I do think it makes sense for the Big Ten to want to add more to maybe from the Pac-12 to give those two teams a few other teams to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but it'll be interesting. I, I'm I'm not mad about it in the sense that so much of this has been happening in the last 10 years that I'm just used to it. Right. Um, it's not going to kill college football in the sense that there's still going to be plenty of games to watch and bowl games or whatever. But right. For anybody that does care about tradition and just having a Midwest conference, that we are far past those days. That's going to, yeah. So there's there's a couple things here. One thing that I just want to point out that is really funny. When the Big Ten has expanded in the past, they obviously made the decision to not change the name. We're just going to go with Big Ten. Right, Who yeah. cares if it doesn't make sense? The Pac-12, <laughs> they they did decide to spend the money to for the logo change and everything from Pac-10 to Pac-12 when they expanded to 12. And so they've been set there at Pac-12 with 12 teams. Now they're back to 10. <laughs> yeah. They should have just stayed the Pacific Conference. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they never they just needed- been pac yeah, they, they been never it. needed to change, and I think the Pacific would have sounded really good, um, yeah. but uh, kind of like the American, you know, when they rebranded from the Big East. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But well, that's we where I was going to go is the branding thing as a guy who cares about stuff like that. I read a whole discussion thread about like, well, like there were, a, how many teams were there prior to this? In for which? The Big Ten? For the Big Ten? 14. 14. 14, and then there was a time where there was 11, which is why there was in the negative space of the letters for Big Ten, there was a number 11 right. hidden in there. So mm-hmm. they are like, well, we're Big Ten, but there's 11 of us. So then some are like, well, when are you going to just change the name? And they're like, it doesn't really matter. I think there was six teams originally when it was like the Big Ten first became the Big Ten because they're like, we'll give ourselves some room for oh, okay. whatever when there was only six at the time. But yeah, I think that'll be interesting to see what they do there. I saw a funny thread with a bunch of fans of Pac-12 Pac fans asking like would the big 10 change the name if they keep taking more now like, somebody just chimes in and it's like big 10 is more of a vibe bro <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the name it's a vibe i appreciate it <laughs> yeah so that's funny no they're not going to change the name it's yeah. just the big 10 and the big 10 is a vibe bro yeah it's uh it's one of those things where i i, I think we need to be ready for college football landscape to just look way different everything is going to get turned to its head um, there's a, I mean, there's people, including myself, who like uh, traditionalists who who said, you, you know, Rutgers, why why are we going all the way to to the coast, mm-hmm. right? Um, okay, now now we're spanning both coasts. So, it, and at this point, it, that just doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, it, it does make sense because now Big Ten's massive TV contracts, which are right. only rivaled by the SEC, um. They get to, they just get to expand that, yeah. and then recruiting gets to be expanded now a whole lot. Uh, well, what are the implications? I'm an idiot. What are the implications of just doing like a two conference system, like a lot of the other sports? That's exactly what. So Kirk Herbstreit wrote uh, an interesting blurb about this, uh, where he basically said, "You know what? This is going to get to a point because the Big Ten and the SEC are now they're just getting bigger, and the gap." of the, the money that's coming in between Big Ten and SC, SEC versus everyone else is just continuing right. to grow. Right. So like the Pac-10, Pac-12, at some point, if this keeps going, ceases to exist. Maybe. Uh, and, and he and so what his point was, don't be surprised if we see in the future that the Big Ten and SEC each will have like 50, 55 teams. And then at that point, things get get restructured to where you essentially think of it as as Eastern Western Conference or whatever. Only they're just not Eastern Western. AFC NFC. Think of AFC NFC. You have Big Ten. You have SEC. And then within the Big Ten, you might see the actual Midwest region, region of the of, Big Ten yeah. re reform. Yeah. And then and then we'll be in a way back to where we were. Um, but that was that was his point. So I mean, we're seeing players getting paid, yep. um, and that's going to continue. Although that's probably going to get reined in heavily. Yeah. But we're seeing that we're going to see essentially a two conference situation possibly in the future if it goes that route. Teams like Notre Dame are going to be forced to finally have to have to choose. Um, yeah, yeah. If we would have said five years ago. In five years, pairs will be getting played, and USC is going to join the Big Ten. <laughs> you would have gone. <laughs> this is changing so quick. So Kirk yeah. Herbstreit could be right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's no reason to think that he absolutely is right, but 
Uh, but it I, could I, be. I don't know about this idea of that many, but some of the next targets that they think could, the dominoes that could fall. Um, originally, we started hearing Washington and Oregon. That mm-hmm. would make sense as kind of sure. a 4 team pod on the West Coast. Then you could have kind of a cornfield pod, which is like Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Wisconsin. Then you could have kind of the Indiana, Michigan, and then the East Coast, like Rutgers, Maryland, Penn State, whatever. Um, no- Notre Dame is also a big one. I do think academics is is a part of the discussion for the expansion, at least how they justify it to the universities, because there is this whole crowdfunded part of the academics where they share like institution and research dollars is the AAU organization that uh, is certain like athletic and academic universities that are um, highly academic. And they're talking about like the amount of donated money for research um, and the amount of stuff that can get shared between these institutions is can even outpace the, the academic or the, the sports dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think TV markets are a big part of it. So they've talked about like Washington, Oregon, Notre Dame, um, Georgia Tech keeps coming up, uh, Virginia and North Carolina keep coming up. All of those are pretty academic schools, but also big markets for, for TV. Wouldn't that be fun to go down south and steal one? Georgia Tech being Atlanta, then you've got Virginia and North Carolina, lots of Ohio State alumni, or Big Ten alumni in the Carolinas, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think a lot of those are other potentials that, that keep coming up. I think 20 to 24 in the next couple of years is very realistic as far as not everyone fully added, but offers extended invitations accepted. And, um, you know, them forming up essentially little pods, Mm -hmm. you know, the reason you wouldn't call it divisions anymore. Um, divisions are set up traditionally in a way that you play through your division and then you meet at the end of the season cross division pods. You would play through your pod and then you would rotate teams out of other pods to play. Right. Um, so like if there was four PAC 12 teams like Washington, Oregon, USC and UCLA, they would play all of the other ones and then could rotate to the Midwest pod as the other teams that they play. Mm-hmm. Um, so it could be really interesting um, to see what happens. There's been like discussions about what if the remnants of the PAC 12 invite the mountain West in, what if the PAC 12 partners up with the big 12 or the ACC to form like, uh, you know, a, a kind of third tier, you know, super conference. So right. it'll, it'll be really interesting to see if any of that happens. Um, all of that would have felt like a stretch until Texas and Oklahoma, and then especially USC and UCLA now. Yeah. And now it feels like a bit of an arms race between the Big Ten and the SEC. It does. And I, I feel like the way that that's more apt to go, if you start seeing conferences having to get creative or fail, um, is that, I mean, the, the, the top echelon of all, each of those conferences are going to get offered dollar signs from the SEC and Big Ten that no other deal can give them. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the reason I think that's the answer to that question. Like, if the Pac-12 completely disintegrates, where do they go? Big Ten and SEC, if they want them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the reason I don't necessarily know about fifty-five or or whatever Kirk is saying, mm-hmm. not that he's he's clearly an expert, but like we don't gain it. The Big Ten doesn't gain anything by adding Cincinnati, and the more teams you yeah. add, the more you have to split the revenue. So if you're trying to keep the revenue per team high. You want to add totally new markets, not smaller teams with less eyeballs that would make less money in existing markets. Sure. So that's why, well, why wouldn't they take Oregon and Oregon State? Because you only need one of them to open up the Oregon market. Well, why wouldn't we want Cincinnati or Pitt? Because we already have Ohio and Pennsylvania markets. Sure. Why would you go all the way down to Georgia Tech? Because they're in Atlanta, and that opens up the Atlanta market. And so I think you have to really justify at this point, like the, I saw numbers that like USC and UCLA were 60% of the PAC 12s viewership with those two teams because they're in LA. Mm -hmm. So you have a massive, massive market in LA on the West coast that the big 10 just basically captured. Right. Um, But according to your theory, couldn't they have captured it with only one? 
They could have, but that might have been if they came to approach the Big Ten, they might have shown up as a package deal. Might've, Some people yeah. think that that's what Notre Dame is doing with with a team like Stanford. Yeah. Hey, if you you know now that you'd add UCA, USC, UCLA, we'd have Michigan and Michigan State and Purdue all as rivals in the Big Ten. If we can come with Stanford, but Stanford's also in a different market, aren't they? The Bay Area. So that's different than L.A. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other California. Oh yeah, yeah, market. yeah. California's <clears throat> a big state. Like there's, there's yeah, a lot Stanford's Palo Alto. Yeah, so that's like that brings an end immediately. Uh, Apple, Apple Corp was open to discuss reopen to reopening discussions with the Big Ten Network about getting Big Ten games on Apple TV. Mm-hmm. So it immediately opened up this huge, you know, this opportunity for the Big Ten. So, so the markets have to make sense. The NFL is the, on is Amazon the now, and <clears throat> exactly the world is. Flying by, and, and really, they're making all these TV deals when we don't even know that the TV traditional cable companies will be the highest bidders in the next ten years. Exactly, you know. But that's who's the highest bidder right now, and so that's what they're going after. I'm just putting this out in the universe. I think you guys need to be guests on the Big Ten Plus Four Plus Two, <laughs> I, and somebody else needs to rebrand say, while need we're to, talking about. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's a certain podcast that we're friends. <laughs> certain with. podcast friend of the show needs two guests, and they can talk sports. Come Big on. Ten Plus Forever. I, I, either, <laughs> that's they I, need to do. Either that or Kendall and I can have another. It can be like a mid bit, mid bit thing where we just have to, or a tangent where we just do a certain college football. Bring Sherry in, my teams. Sherry, because she disagreed with some of y'all's talk when you guys had. Um, oh man, when yeah, when you guys were talking college football, mm-hmm. so she's oh, like, she wanted it? to call in and leave a voicemail. Yeah, she texted me as soon as the USC US USC UCLA thing came up. I said, let's just absorb the whole pack. <laughs> <laughs> Why not take all of them? Who care if you're already going to do that? Then just make it like the West. A uh, division is the pack in like Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and the East is everybody else. Mm-hmm. Why the heck not? Yeah. Oh, it was your conversation with Sam about the way too soon uh, rankings. She had a lot of thoughts on that, and oh, she'd sure. be the, she'd be the counter, you know, balance of yeah. your triangles. So that'd yeah. be good. Well, that was the fun part about that was it was just <laughs> it is too early, and so. It, but that's we, what she was saying. She was saying it's not. We very easily could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, we could be right about a lot of it, and we very easily could be wrong. That's why it's fun. <laughs> All you have to do is like look at look at the top ten, the the preseason rankings, and then let's see who's still there. Yeah. At the end of the year, and that tells you that you know, it's impossible to get those things right. Yep. Yeah. Good stuff. So, anyways, this should be a fun ongoing thing like maybe not every week but probably once a month there's going to be news on the regular i think so yeah i I think this is gonna i think this is gonna feel like another this isn't gonna be just texas oklahoma then quiet for months i think this is gonna be fairly regular so yeah and like you said there's already rumors out there for 10 different teams that might be coming to the big 10 like it's they're obviously just rumors, but the, interestingly, the USC UCLA UCLA thing started off. It broke in the morning as a rumor, and then got some chatter from Six ESPN, hours later. and and then later that evening they voted on it, and it was all done in a day. So we heard the rumor in the morning, yeah. and then it was done by the time deal it was went done to bed. at dinner. One of the thing, one of the rumors that was interesting, which has already been denied fervently, of course, was that uh, Utah. Colorado and the Arizonas had already met with the Big 12. And I thought that would be a crazy basketball conference. Yeah. Crazy, insane basketball conference. Like, I would just, that was really interesting to me. Even if it's denied and never happens, all the speculation is fun. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure some people, is. some people feel like the college football world is burning down around them. But if you don't mind just the drama of it all, yeah. it's fun to think about. My team is still my team. I'm going to root yeah. for them. I'm going to watch games, and I'm going to have fun. There you go. All the rest of the stuff that's around it is interesting it's to context. Me. If they just start rotating in USC and UCLA every six to eight years, I don't care. I'm that's just, fine. Hey, I'm just going to yeah. watch that anyways. You know? Yeah. Well, there's clearly a lot we're excited to watch. Would you guys like to share as we wind down any things that you have watched recently? Oh Anything man, that's been out. that's been much harder. Sopranos uh, are still going strong in my yeah. House. What what season are you on? Four season four season four was there uh, seven eight, maybe seven or eight? eight yeah, eight. feels right. 
Huh. Um, I Dylan recommended Miss Marvel, so we've been watching that as a family on Very Disney good. Plus. I finished Obi Wan finally. Uh, we've got to talk about that at some point. Um, but you guys know we love us some Sebastian Maniscalco on this podcast, and we haven't said his name in a while. I was watching his podcast with uh, Pete Corielli, and he said, I almost never watch stand-up. There's this weird thing with stand-up comedians that they don't watch a lot of each other's specials. And Sebastian said, go to YouTube right now, stop everything you're doing, and watch Giannis Papas' Mom Love. He said, it's the funniest stand-up I've seen in the last (coughs) couple years specifically his bits about (laughs) and he's an equal opportunity offender so uh he has bits about how different um uh when you bring your parent you know your parent comes in to talk about what they do for a living at school Mm -hmm. uh how differently that's gonna look career day career day is gonna look in this world of like gig economy and things like (laughs) uh What's the website where people show themselves? Anyway, stuff like that. And then also, he (laughs) said... Only fans. Only fans. And then he says, wouldn't it be funny? This country's just getting so crazy. We just need like a left airline and a right airline. And then he plays out what each airline's foods would be and what the, <laughs> what they would say on the loudspeaker as you were boarding for each. Yeah. It's just, I, it's so, so funny. Definitely for adults, it is not clean, but it's so well-written. And because he just takes jabs at both sides of almost every issue, is social issue too, is really, really good. So I agree with Sebastian. Check out Giannis Papas, Mom Love. I'm so disappointed. I wanted to watch it before... This up, ep- we recorded this episode so I could discuss it. I haven't got a chance to watch yeah. it yet. But if Sebastian recommends something that highly, I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to chime in and let you know. I think the only thing, um, we are watching Miss Marvel for anyone who thinks that, like, I can't ever dislike or not love something Marvel. <laughs> Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, I think I admitted, was probably one of my least favorite MCU movies. Mm-hmm. But much like Pixar, even the worst Pixar movie is still good. I enjoyed Doctor Strange. A lot of people seem to think that the second viewing uh, has is uh, high return on that. People okay. like it a lot more the second time. I haven't watched it a second time yet, though. But if you have the time for it, go for it. Um, I Miss Marvel is probably my least favorite MCU show so far. Um, but I like that we're seeing... Uh, we had a, a little bit more of a slow burn origin story. Um, like at Moon Knight felt way faster comparatively, like the start of Moon Knight and getting that one ramped up. This one feels much slower, but this is apparently a really popular character from the comics, the most recent Avengers video game. And so a lot of people like Kamala Khan. And so I'm excited for all the people who have been reading her stories yeah, and or relate to her as a Muslim from big city, East Coast, New Jersey, whatever, teenager, mm-hmm. it feels like a character who long-term could have Spidey's appeal. That mm-hmm. like the, the appeal of Spidey being like, well, I grew up the nerdy kid in my school and right. I was scrawny and I was whatever. And, you know, and I, so I feel like she could have that sort of long-term pull as a character for a lot of people, the actress is great. I'm not saying everything about the show is great because it's fine, but I think the main actress is really, really yeah, talented. Super, super talented. Um, and it's been fun. It's just been a fun one to watch. It's been, it's been nice. So, um, and then we're watching back through Ted Lasso because our Apple TV plus subscription is going to end. Although maybe not if big 10 games start going on Apple TV plus, yeah, we'll yeah. see. Um, so we're watching back through uh, Ted Lasso, and we got to start Only Murders in the Building season two. Yeah, yeah. that just dropped, that just as well as uh, oh, did it? season four, part two of Stranger Things, and we're halfway through a new season of Alone. And in case you don't know, we had an Alone contestant on our show, episode yes. number one hundred and seventeen, with Nate Weber. So one of uh, our most popular episodes yeah. of all time, I believe. Yeah, and it's really fun to sort of like root for your favorite character and sort of place bets on who you think's going to do better based on their survival experience. And sometimes that doesn't matter at all. Um, so yeah, that's been a great season. I also, I think I may have mentioned, I started watching the U.S. version. Of love on the spectrum, so just a, a couple different irons in the fire, but love it. Um, yeah, it's uh, summer's in full swing. We're enjoying a lot of time outside, swimming, fishing, 
camping, doing all the things, and uh, it's been a minute since we got together, so it was good to hang out with you guys. Um, if you're wondering what that amazing smell is, that is my beard butter. The flavor or the scent is Restoration, brought to you by our friends over at Artius Man. That's www.artiusman.com. They make amazing, uh, all-natural men's grooming products especially for beards and it's very very good very high quality stuff uh i love it and um you should check it out i rode over tonight uh on my motorcycle and it was just filling my helmet uh mm. with the smells it's awesome so anyway um check out rdsman.com thanks jeff for the partnership and uh, you should go over there and use promo code the middle at checkout once you fill your cart that's the middle at checkout um, to get 25% off your first order. So um, thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you all next week. Catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs> I feel like I'm inside your mouth. The sound quality is so good. <laughs>